Guys, UFC 278 is just days away, and if you're looking for your own big win this weekend, head on over to DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC. If you're a new customer, you can bet $5 on any fighter to win, and you're going to get $200 in free bets instantly. It's that simple. You can even try DraftKings' same game parlay for even more action. Combine multiple bets from the same fight, like which fighter will win, how long will the fight last, and more. Same game parlays give DraftKings customers a shot at making their bag even bigger if it all hits. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the promo code SUNNEN. Bet $5 on any UFC 278 fighter to win and get $200 in free bets instantly, no matter what. That's Code Sunnen this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC. 2022, guys, I can't let it go. 2022, if you're a fight guy and you want to be on the business side, I mean, if that's your hope or dream, you look up today and you want to go to, I mean, there's things that you have to sit and study. You must study 2022. I don't have my finger on it yet. And I got to tell you, I've been watching. What day are we in? We're in the 20th day of the eighth month. Eighth month. I have studied it every single day. I don't, I don't fully have it. All I can tell you from an observation standpoint is it's never been done before. I'm talking about the Ultimate Fighting Championship specifically. But if 2022 Dana White had a conversation with 2001 Dana White, these two aren't going to agree. Some of the biggest stars are over here. They're on ice. They're not, it's not this, this huge push to get them in. Arenas are filling up. The ratings are doing great. We're getting the next guy in line, getting his opportunity. Some really positive things are happening. But it's a very different time. Let me give you a great example, guys. Paulo Costa is going to fight in a co-main event this weekend. Now, Ariel Hawani likes to use the term, the people's main event. It is a very big match. I mean, this is a sought-after and talked-about match, including by me. Paulo Costa, Luke Rockhold. I have a different opinion on Luke Rockhold. I think Luke is good for the sport. I think it's a heck of a lot more fun when Luke is around. Luke is himself. He won't wilt. You guys boo him. He knows why you boo him, and he refuses to change. You can just go ahead and boo him. He's going to be him. I mean, not for nothing, but I like a guy like that. I like a guy that's, that's true to himself. And, and, and lives by his code, whatever that might be. Now, Luke is a heel, make no mistake. Largely because he's handsome and can kick everybody's ass, right? I mean, he's got the two things that every guy wants. He can beat up all the dudes and he can take your girl. It's just a problem. You're going to be a heel. Well, Paul has got the same thing. It, it's just one, it's one of these things. Okay, great. So you have two heels. Now, there's nothing that you're guaranteed to make money off of, box office-wise, than a cool heel. It's hard to do. I'm not giving Paulo or Luke that credit. I mean, that's huge prey. You're talking about The Rock right now. You're talking about Stone Cold Steve Austin. If you can be a cool bad guy, it's huge. But you still have two bad guys. You have two heels. And they're going to fight each other. Now, generally in these situations, one guy flips to face because neither guy wants to be booed. They just are. People that the crowd doesn't like, they didn't come out to be that guy. They wanted to be like, they were just doofuses, and people saw it, and they started, boom, it's one of these spots. So it's an opportunity for one of them to get what they truly want, which is the approval of the crowd. Neither guy is seeking it. When I talk about 2022 being unlike any other year, by example, this fight, co-main event, coming up this weekend, Paulo Costa just reveals the last fight on his contract. Now, we've seen guys play that game. Shane Burgos comes to mind. Just happened, landed over in the Professional Fighters League. We've seen guys do this. It's risky. I'm a risk taker. It's a little rich for my blood. If I'm to be fair with you, I think of myself as a guy that takes risks and I have big balls. I don't know that I have those. Right, if you're, if you're fighting, you're competing, you're talking about being a world champion, you're talking about pay-per-view, and you're talking about making money, I mean, it's just like whatever job that you guys have or that I have now. The number one most important thing, it's not that I do a great job today. That's important. It's not the most important. The number one most important thing for me to do at my job today is make sure that I have a job to come to tomorrow. The single most important thing 
Because at, at the end of the day, no matter how successful or boy, it was a down day that I am not let go and I can come back and try again tomorrow in all fairness. So when a fighter like Paulo Costa fights out his contract, okay, great. But it's one of these spots as well where historically speaking, you can't promote a guy that you don't have. There'd be no point. You're not going to co-main event. You're not going to take up TV time. You're not going to put billboards. You're not going to put down a whole bunch of money on a product that you can't get any ROI because he's going to be free tomorrow anyway. That, that business model is not sustainable. Co-main event. He just, he just revealed this for us. It just came out. Talk about 2022 being different. That's a great example that I just gave you on Paulo Costa. I think you'd have a hard time historically showing me any fighter who was on his last fight that got in a feature match like a co-main event, but fast forward a little bit, Nate Diaz publicly on his last fight. He's going to headline. He's going to main event. There's just not a lot of times in history, if any, specifically with the Ultimate Fighting Championship, where that's happened. Luke was doing it. I'm jumping around. I realize I'm jumping around, but it, but it all ties back in together. It's just that we're in an unusual time. Is this going to work or is it not? What should we observe? Are we observing what to do or what not to do? I mean, don't forget, Dana White, as great as he is, he paid for his education. There was no library he could go check out a book on this. He didn't have an uncle or a buddy, someone that he could call to mentor him. There was no college he could get a degree. He paid for his education. He lost a bunch of money, made a whole bunch of mistakes before he straightened out. So you got to study these things. 2022 really is a fascinating time. You come to Luke Rockall. What's Luke going to do? I mean, you have a co-main event of Paulo Costa who you don't know if you're going to get back. If he, if he doesn't beat Luke and he hasn't signed, he's probably not coming back. Oh, and by the way, if he does beat Luke and he hasn't signed, he's going to be a pain in the ass to work with. Okay, great. Th that's the business. Paulo's taking a risk. Full respect to it. Just spelling out for you. But the same thing goes for Luke. Whether he wins or loses, who knows when he's coming back? I can't remember the last time that he fought. So Luke goes into the press conference and he shows up with a stick up his ass. I don't know. Luke was bad, but it's great. It's one of the reasons I tell you it's more fun when Luke's around. Luke's always angry about something. He cut a promo on psychedelics. Literally, he, he used his press time in front of the world talking about mushrooms. And he was talking about it's a, it's a poison. If you don't know what you're doing, if you do and you're responsible, it's a medicine. And I've used this and I got a deeper side. I mean, he turned into this whole thing where we're going down this avenue that I never thought this would have gone. And then he picked out some reporter directly. Talked about Full Send podcast, talked about Barstool Sports, which, by the way, I don't think they're related, but Luke related them. And then he buried them to the guy. It was like the guy and had some kind of defense to do with Cheeto Vera. I didn't fully understand the whole thing. I don't have to. I don't have to. There was a press conference yesterday. The top fighters in the world did it. I fast forwarded all of them except Luke's. I watched it start to finish. There was something about it. He was giving business advice and talking about organizations. He was talking about leverage. I mean, he was going in all sorts of directions. And the bottom line is once he gets done with this whole thing, the only thing he has to look forward to is cutting weight down 185 pounds, getting a night's sleep, and then going in there with a guy they call the Terminator. I mean, you can't write this stuff any better. You, you cannot, Vince McMahon cannot script this better. And generally speaking, either Costa or Luke is going to come out to be the face. Like the crowd doesn't boo two guys. There are times historically where the crowd will cheer and then the crowd will cheer stronger. I could give you those examples every Saturday night. It's not great. It's not an emotion. It's not huge. It happens. I'd be very hard-pressed to give an example. One guy gets introduced and is booed. The next guy gets introduced and is booed. It's just not what the psychology of the fan is looking for. The psychology of the fan is looking to cheer for somebody and thus cheering against somebody. It's what this entire sport is. It's not punches and kicks. It's not belts and trophies. It's conflict and conflict resolution, immediate. That is what drives this. That is what this is. This is why you're watching it on television. The same exact, just by example, the same exact product with the same exact characters, if there was a draw clause and that became common, it's very, it's very different what the ratings do. It's very different how people come in. You have conflict, you have conflict resolution. It's important. 
and generally one of the guys would reach to put all of their past behind him and come out and be a face and have the crowd cheering for him. Neither Paulo was interested in that, and neither was Luke. That, to me, is interesting. I don't know where they go from here. I mean, this is a massive fight, in my opinion. Luke Rockholt was going to fight Sean Strickland. I personally would have used whatever influence I could, would Sean have beaten him, to make Sean the number one contender. And I think I would have won that battle. And at the end of the day, I could have won that battle. And Luke, it's very rare that you beat a world champion. The history of this sport says you beat a world champion, you get a fight for a world championship. Now, that's not an absolute, but that is what the history of this sport dictates. There's not a lot of world champions floating around. Get in an opportunity, get in there with Luke Rockhold. It's a big deal. And now you're telling me that the guy who's getting that opportunity is not locked up under contract. In 2001, Dana White is going to tell 2022 Dana White, don't co-main event the sun bitch, but he is. It's a very different time. There is a strategy and a plan going on on the second floor of the US. I don't know what it is yet. But it's these little things. Little things keep on happening, such as this. For a reason, which I haven't yet figured out. But I'm identifying it for you. Enjoy it. Enjoy 2022. There's never been a year like it.